My name is Pastor Sam Velez. I'm the executive pastor here at Iglesia Cristiana Misericordia. God has a specific word for you. Open up your heart and get ready to receive. The title of my message is simply this. Don't waste your breath. Don't waste your breath. Don't waste your breath. So many of us, we waste our breath on petty things. Some of us waste our breath fighting with people on Facebook that don't even matter. So many of us waste our breath on so many other things instead of using our breath to bring glory to God. And then we, come, we become frustrated. It's frustrating to try to have a relationship with Jesus and always feel the way you feel. Negative, tired. It's frustrating to try to live this Christian life and never feel satisfied because we were created by the creator and therefore we were created to know him first. We exist to know God. We exist to have intimacy with God before anything else. So don't waste your breath. Some of you are frustrated because you've wasted your breath trying to do things that you think should please God. Therefore, if I do these things and I live this traditional religious uh, Christian life, then I should feel better about myself. And before you know it, you're getting angry because you don't see the results. And then you, you start comparing yourself to other, other people. And before you know it, you're frustrated and you're envious. Can I tell you something? Your relationship with God is something to be enjoyed, not endured. And so many people are just enduring this life. So many people are just enduring the day. So many people are just trying to get to Friday. If I can just get to Friday, I can take off my boots and I'm good. So many people are just trying to endure when God created us to enjoy. And so how can we create intimacy with God? How can we create this life of pursuit of knowing him first? How do we create intimacy? How do we know him? How can I pursue God with the existence that I have to know him in a deeper way? If you're taking notes, number one is you must love him. You must love him. I want to read to you a passage. It's probably one of the scariest passages because... Um, it's, it's almost like a reality check. If you go to Matthew chapter 7, 21 through 23, it's going to be there. It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles then I will tell them plainly I never knew you away from me you evil doers away from me you evil doers 1 John 4 19 says this we love because he first loved us the reason why I wanted to bring up those two passages, the first one is a scary passage because it sounds like it doesn't make sense. Like these people are going to God and they're, it looks like they're prophesying and casting out demons and praying and miracles happening, but they're not able to go to heaven. The reality is, church, the reason why that's a scary, dream, a scary verse and a scary reality is because so many times we got Christianity all jacked up. We think that we can live in sin and also have holiness. We think we can do both. I can do both and be okay. But God is a God that knows all things. God is not a God to be mocked. And if you're trying to live a double life where you're trying to, on Sundays, be okay with Jesus, but then on the weekend, act like you don't even know who he is, you find, that is why you're going to find yourself in that verse. The hard truth, the hard reality is, church, is that we were created, we must love him. See, people... 
do not stay committed to something that they don't love. We, know, we like the church. We like the verses. We like the idea of God. But because we don't love him, we're not committed to him. And since we're not committed to him, we begin to quit halfway. And go back to our old lifestyles. And go back to the old ways that we used to... And go back to the way we used to talk. And the way we used to think. All because we don't love him like we thought we did. To love God is to have a heart that's abandoned for him. To love God is like we were singing today. is where we make room for him. To love God is to be submitted to him. To love God is to abandon everything else because you know what? I need to be committed. I'm, I'm, I need God more than anything to love him. If you love him enough, then and then, only then, will you begin to surrender everything else. But if you are someone that thinks that I'm going to live my life the way I want to live it and then add God to my schedule at some point. I hate to tell you this. You're not going to make it because you were not created to do two things at the same time. That's why Jesus would talk a lot about you cannot serve two masters. It's either one or the other. Either you are for me or you are against me, but there was no middle ground for you. So many people want to play the middle ground. Where, yeah, yeah, I love God, but, you know, I'll go to church. And we think that if I go to church on Sundays, if I tune in online, if I fill myself with that, I'm going to be okay. But come Friday, you don't have anything left in the tank because you don't love him. You don't love him. And if we say we love God, then it means that we are submitted to him. It means that, you know what, hey, I love him enough that I'm going to create moments to know him better. I love him enough that I'm going to create moments to let go of things. I love him enough to submit to him, to surrender to him. How can I love him more? Create a moment for him every single day. Create a moment to know him better. Spend some time. Well, Pastor Sam, I don't, I don't know if I have a lot of time. I work and all that stuff. You mean you, don't, you can't pray when you're driving? On your lunch break, you can't read the word? If you're not an early morning person that wakes up at 6 a.m. to pray, that's okay. Just because people wake up at 6 a.m. to pray doesn't make them more powerful than the one that prays at 6 p.m. It's the same thing. God doesn't favor either or. It's the same. Find time. Find time and make a schedule. This is, I'm going practical now. Make a schedule that says, you know what? From this time to this time, I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to read his word. I'm going to pray. I want to know him. I want to have a moment with him. I want to make room so that God can fill me with his spirit. I'm not going to wait just uh, for next Sunday so I can feel his presence. No, no. I'm going to make room for him. If we make room, God fills it. If we make room, God fills it. So you got to set time. And then you got to evaluate. What is it that doesn't honor God so that I can release it so that he could be glorified? We exist to know him, church. And to know him is to love him. To love him. And when, like I said, when you love something, you're committed to it. And when you don't really love something, you're not that committed to it. So the question is, do you love him enough to stay committed? Stay committed through a pandemic. Stay committed through loss. Stay committed through gossip. Stay committed when the answers aren't coming the way you want them to. Staying committed. Because let me tell you something, church. I never have heard anybody that was committed to God and God did not bless. We serve a God that blesses. 
his people. We serve a God that blesses those who bless him. We serve a God that provides. We serve a God that heals. We serve a God that still does miracles today. We serve a God that's alive to today. We serve that kind of God. And so in return, why don't we love him the way we should? We're committed to him. We're committed to his presence. We're committed. You must love him. Because you love him, you're committed. Second thing is this, is you must pursue him with all your heart. You must pursue him with all your heart. The Bible says this in Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Church, it's not about lip service, it's life service. It's not about lip service, it is about a life service. Jesus, in, in Matthew chapter 6, I'm not going to read it for you, but there was a time where Jesus was talking to the people, and he's answering to these Pharisees. Pharisees were religious people. And he says something that's very, very key, because the Pharisees were very, very good at putting burdens on people. They were very good at putting burdens on their life and trying to make them live a standard that they themselves couldn't live. And Jesus, Jesus, if Jesus had social media, Jesus would be calling them out on Facebook. They were putting all these pressures on people. And Jesus says a statement from Isaiah. He says, their lips, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Church, we want to, we exist to know God. If we want to be intimate with God, we must pursue him with all of our hearts. With all our heart. With a life service. It's not just me telling God I love you. It's not just me posting it on social media that I love him. It's not just me telling some people, yeah, man, I go to this church. I love this about God. It's not just that. It is how you live your life in pursuit of him. See, church, if we spent more time pursuing him, we spend less time pursuing our selfish desires. If you have bad habits, can I tell you something? If you spend more time pursuing him, you'll spend less time falling into your bad habits. If you spend more time pursuing his presence, you will spend less time wasting your breath on pointless arguments. If you spend more time pursuing his glory and pursuing his word, you will spend less time with every other thing that does not matter. You spend less time because you're choosing to pursue him. I love that Jeremiah said that. If you seek me, you will find me with all of your hearts. And he, you have to understand something. He is prophesying during this time. He's, about to, he's prophesying that they're about to get out of captivity, captivity. The Israelites were in captivity by Babylon. They were going through a rough time. It wasn't an easy time. It's like a, it, they were going through a hard time. They were going through, through slavery. They were going through troubles. They were not free. And so Jeremiah says, hey, if you seek him, you will find him. If you seek him, you will find him. If you pursue him, you're going to find him. Church, God is not someone that's hard to find. He's not someone that I got to travel three hours away to find him. He's right there in your room. He's right. His presence is there in your household. He is simply there with arms open wide. God wants you. So why not Pursue him. Why not seek him with all of your heart? Church, you don't have to quit your job or quit school so that you can focus more on God. You just got to quit the excuses. If there's something you got to quit, it is the excuses as to why you can't pursue him. Quit the excuses. 
and ask, here's something, church. You want to do something practical? Practical? Do what Peter did. Say, Lord, increase in my life. Increase. You must increase, and I must decrease. Peter realized, man, if I want more of God, he has to be the one to increase. I need to have a desire to, for God to increase in my life. And that my selfish ambitions and my selfish things would decrease. It doesn't mean that you stop doing the things you love. It doesn't mean that you stop your career. It doesn't mean that you stop doing all these other things. What it means is that your life revolves around God, not God revolving around your life. It's your life. God's the center and you're revolving around it. God's the source and you're revolving around it. God is the source of your decisions. God is the source of your emotions. God is the person that you go to first. God is the one that you love first. And then everything else, everything else matters. And then everything else. But pursue him with all of your heart. Pursue him with all your heart. We want to know him more intimately. Pursue him with all of your heart. Don't pursue him with some of your heart. Don't just pursue him on weekends. Don't try to compartmentalize God. No, no. Pursue him with all of your heart and you will find him. I've never met anyone that pursued God with everything and left empty. I never met someone that pursued God with everything and still felt the same. If you, if you say that you pursue God and feel empty, that's not God, it's you. Because every time we come completely surrendered to God, my gosh, that's where his presence comes. That's where his peace comes. That's where wisdom comes. That's where all of these things that we desire from God come because we completely pursue him with our hearts. Pursue him with all your heart. The last one is this, is you must give him your life. You must give him your life. Luke 9, 23 through 27 says, Then he said to them, All, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet lose or forfeit their soul? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. What I mean by you must give him your life, number one, if you've never given your life to Jesus, today's the day you can. That's the first step. But number two, if you have already given your life to Jesus and you've already been serving him for a number of years, what I mean is this is you must stay committed no matter the cost. Because there is a cost. When you decide to completely live for God and you give him your life, sometimes it's going to cost you influence. Sometimes it's going to cost you friendships. Sometimes it's going to cost you certain things. But can I tell you something? The reward is far greater than anything else. See, we love the, the, the cross. We, we, we love people get tattoos about it. People put stickers on it. People have that on their backgrounds. We love the cross a lot because the cross brings significance for us. It's a testimony of who Jesus is in our life. But can I tell you something? We forget sometimes that the cross was a brutal way to die in Jesus' time. The cross was brutal. If you read the Gospels, you understand what I'm talking about. The cross was a brutal thing and it was humiliating. Yet Jesus does it anyways. 
And for Jesus, it was humiliating. It was painful. But for us, it's power. For us, it's freedom. For us, there's a difference because he rises from the dead three days later. And I bring that up because let me tell you something. Like Paul said, I want to know Christ and even in the suffering for him. You know what you're saying? He was like, I want to know Christ so much even if I have to suffer for it. Even if I have to lose friends for it. Even if I have to lose some sort of influence for it. Even if people mock me or stop following me. Even if people don't like me. Because let me tell you something, church. The church is being challenged more than ever in our nation. People are trying to do different things and bring ideologies and try to impart in our school different things that are against what God's word says. And it's time for me and you to be the type of church that stands. No matter the cost. That's why Jesus said, if you want to keep your life, you're going to lose it. If you try to keep your life, if you try to keep the same lifestyle, if you try to keep the same mindset, if you try to keep doing the same thing, eventually you're going to lose. But Jesus is like, hey, but if you give it up for my sake, you're going to find the real reward. Because here's the thing, church, like I read in Genesis, we were created, God breathed on man. And when God breathes something, it means that he's creating something new. We were created for a purpose. We were created to do more. We were created to be more. And it requires a surrender. It requires us trusting him. Knowing Jesus and trying to submit to him and trying to pursue him and trying to give your life to him is a daily choice because Jesus said, carrying up, you got to take up your cross every single day. Taking up your cross doesn't feel good sometimes. Taking up your cross, taking up your pride, taking up your anger, taking up your depression isn't always easy, but can I tell you it's worth it? It's not easy. It's not easy. I'm not going to tell you that every day you're going to be at 100 and you're never going to have a problem and you're never going to have to go through anything. No, no, no. There are going to be issues. But like I said last week, God, we already know the end of the story. God wins. God wins. He wins. You must love him. You must pursue him with all your heart and you must give him your life. We exist to know God first. We exist for intimacy with him. And everything else will follow. When our why is about God, I live for God. That is my why. I live to please him and I, I, and I live so that I could be with him. When our why is clear, it will follow our what's. It will follow what we do because we came back to our why. Hey, thank you for tuning in. I hope you were encouraged and challenged through God's word. If you've never received Christ as your savior, today's the day. All you have to do is repeat after me. Say, God, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Come into my heart. I accept you as my savior. This was your first time. You've made the greatest decision ever. If you're new or you've never been to our church, every single Sunday we have service just for you at 9 a.m. We'll see you there.